Britain will pass the threshold for herd immunity on Monday. This is according to UCL, University College London, not an insignificant study. Their results show that the number of people who have protection against the virus, either through vaccination or infection, will reach 73.4% on the 12th. By a neat coincidence, of course, that's the day we begin easing the lockdown. That's enough, we are told, to tip the country into herd immunity. However... And there is always a spanner in the works. Imperial College's modelling has suggested that there would only be 34% protection by the end of March. Who's right? Let's speak to David Livermore, Professor of Medical Microbiology at the University of East Anglia. David, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. So who's got this one right, UCL or Imperial College? I think UCL are much closer to being correct here. I mean, the latest ONS survey showed that 54% of people had antibodies, and that was by the middle of March. A further 7 7 million people have been vaccinated since then. So the total must be be well over uh, 60% with uh, antibodies by now and going up all the time. Mm. And if you count in people who are protected through exposure with other coronaviruses to a degree, then I'm sure the 70% that UCL have come up with is about right. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, in effect, not that hard to work out, is it? I mean, if you know, we know how many people have been vaccinated. We know how many people have had COVID. So, I mean, in in kind of Fisher Price terms, you put those two points together and and you end up with your your kind of 73.4%. You, you can certainly come up with a back of the envelope calculation and it's plain as pie that 34%, I think you mentioned from Imperial, yeah. is far too low when ONS was showing that um, three weeks ago, uh, 54% of people had antibodies. What if we can't all... be 34%, can it? When 54% have antibodies. Well, we've got more than 34% have, have been vaccinated. So, I mean, that, that calls into question where they got the 34%, unless they're suggesting vaccination doesn't count. Which would, which would be bizarre because the bit, vaccines yeah. have been through clinical trials and they are effective. The AstraZeneca one, at least about 65% and maybe as high as 75% effective. Moderna and Pfizer up in the 90s. Where do you think, I mean, the government, obviously, they, they set this roadmap out. It was, what, a couple of months ago now, the prime minister stood there and said, look, this is what we're doing. And we finally got the dates. We eventually got those dates, I think, around Feb, sometime in February, uh, where we were told 12th of April, this will happen. And then subsequently at different dates and different times, other things will open up. I mean, it, the smart money says, David, that the prime minister isn't about to budge from the roadmap, regardless of whether we want him to or not. I think that's a fair assessment, but I also believe that there could be safely an acceleration. It doesn't make great sense that hospitality has to wait for another month and another two months before we get back supposedly to normal. And these crazy ideas of vaccination passports and so on have have no place. If we've reached herd immunity, if we believe that vaccine is going to work, then we ha- we should do what the state of Texas has done in America, and that is open up much more swiftly and more completely. Um, in terms of the world of science, there's always, you know, it's, it's the old thing, isn't it, David? You know this because this is your world. But, you know, you stick 10 mm-hmm. economists in a room and you'll get 10 different answers. Um, similarly, in the world of science, where, where does where does your view sit with your peers and your colleagues? I mean, if you if you were to look across the University of East Anglia or any other similar uh, place of excellence uh, and ask people who did exactly what you do for a living, how many people would concur with Professor Livermore? I will be towards the end that is is most gung-ho about opening up. You will get through to the hyper-cautious at the other end. But um, take what Chris Whitty has said uh, only a couple of weeks ago in a lecture that we must accept that we're going to have to live with some low incidence of COVID for the foreseeable future, but that we can manage it as we've managed influenza. You've got the chief medical officer there who's taken a huge responsibility for all these lockdowns. Even he is not now in that zero COVID, we must keep everything closed Mm. indefinitely. So, 
David, thank you. I, I thought you were going to continue there, but thank you. David Livermore, Professor of Medical Microbiology at the University of East Anglia, with us here on Talk Radio. I should add, by the way, for clarity, University College London aren't advocating easing uh, the, the, the accelerating the lockdown. They're not suggesting that we have to accelerate the lockdown. They're merely saying that these are the figures. They've looked at the modelling and that's how it's looking. And they're, they're, they're delivering the, the data based on that dynamic modelling. And I think it, whilst it's always interesting to hear different schools of thought and, and different colleges and scientists come up with their data, I, I can't, for the life of me, even from a non-scientific perspective, work out where Imperial College's modelling has come from, the 34% by the end of March. I mean, that would just be extraordinary based on the blindingly obvious, you might have thought.